Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I've talked a lot about retailers and, and kind of behaviors you can do in the shop, ways to kind of encourage more people in. One of the sad things is I visit a lot of comic shops. There's this sense of, uh, I, I don't know, maybe the best way to say it. It's not apathy exactly. It's, it's a, a resignation that uh, things are declining and it's kind of a one-way street and there's not a lot of things you can do. I've talked to a lot of retailers who are stuck in a failing business model and, you know, the, they, they blame DC, they blame Marvel, they blame Diamond, um, but there's opportunities for them to do other things. In many cases, and back in the day, 15 years ago, I purchased a, a shop off somebody who, uh, you know, it was, it was in a prime location. You know, you had like three schools that kind of converged in this one area and you had a grocery store nearby. And so parents would come like it was it was a perfect spot for being able to, you know, put some good product out there, get some, you know, get a lot of foot traffic. And uh, they, you know, the guy had a completely junky trashed store. It was designed for, you know, collectors in their 40s who like to dig through long boxes and it was hard to, to walk around. It was just uninviting. So parents, kids wouldn't go there. And, um, you know, the, the, the guy had every opportunity, but what was stuck in just a, well, this is just the way it was kind of way of thinking. So this mail that came in feels a little bit like it, it fits there, um, both from the retailer end and for the salespeople that actually happen to work for the publisher. So let's, let's get to it. It says, uh, sell, sell the mistake. Where are the salesmen or is it salespeople these days? <laughs> uh, who knows? Um, it goes, uh, Hey Perch, hope all is well. As I'm sure has happened to anyone who's ordered comics over internet regularly, I recently got an order that had a book that was damaged beyond its new condition. It's a relatively recent book, so they had another and graciously offered to send a replacement. Later that day, I was looking for another book to fill a new series I started reading and ended up at the same site. For cover price books, shipping is usually not worth it, but I thought, well, they're already sending me a replacement. I'll just ask if they can add these and not charge me shipping. They replied and said, sure. In retrospect, though, it struck me as a missed opportunity. They could have offered for me to add other books with the initial offer of the replacement. I'd probably always look for something on sale, which most recent floppies are, and toss in a couple titles I didn't know just to check them out. So not only is it a missed immediate sale, but a missed chance to maybe hook a reader on a new character and sell a whole series. I probably had half a dozen replacements sent over the past year, and none of them ever offered the chance to add more sales to the shipment. This is kind of bundling or drop shipping. Um, it seems comics in general, not just the shops, but also creators, publishers, distributors, could use more of an old school salesman mentality, not the sleazy guy, the hustler. The guy who's always thinking about how what they're doing is adding to the sale. The guy whose goal it is not just a happy customer, but a customer who feels like they always get more than they expect with every interaction. Anyway, maybe an idea for your new shop's SOP on damage replacements. Um, standard practice. Yeah, anyway, it's a good comment. And, and like I said, there's a lot of shops that really get stuck into this very old mentality that is self-defeating in a lot of ways. You see the industry shifting. You see a lot of things out of somebody's control. And uh, they veer into what they know. And what they know may be a declining business. Um, the thing about comics that it, when going well, and we've seen it gone well in the 80s and the 90s and even the odds to some extent is when the comic publishers and the stores and basically everybody involved every salesman involved in this chain looked at comics as a start to a lifetime of sales and believe it or not i actually was in a meeting i don't know this goes back like i don't know i was doing the consulting at the time and uh, software as a service or SaaS was starting to get more and more popular and the reason why people like software as a service is you basically get a subscription going like Netflix. And what happens is when people get tired of the product, they usually keep paying for several months, if not, you know, years, especially if the price point is low enough that they don't really feel it. They kind of in the back of the head going, I, I think I'm losing money, but you know, it's low. Uh, my wife signed me up for a car wash uh, solution here in Texas. When we first moved down, it was like, I don't know, it was like $12 a month and unlimited car washes. And what I noticed is I wasn't going very often. I just, I, I, I my car wasn't getting that dirty. I, I just, I didn't go. And, and so it took, but it like took almost a year before I looked at this thing, actually more than a year. Cause I just thought it started, started uh, we, we canceled in January, but it was almost a year that they got my money where maybe I, I did six, seven washes. So they profited off me huge because it just, the price was low enough. I didn't think about it. Anyway, I was in this meeting and we were talking about software as a service 
And one of the examples that the uh, salespeople brought up was comics. And they brought up this example of, hey, we got people who get hooked on a character and then they buy the comic every month. And I love the analogy. Of course, I had comic shops at the time. So I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, the, uh, the pull box customers will come in and we'll keep buying. So if you can get them hooked on something new, um, it's usually great. You get several months of additional revenue, if not years, because person's trying to fill out their collection because the price point's low enough that they don't really feel it. Now, this was again 15 years ago when the price point actually was lower. But um, it, it's weird that comics has largely handed away that advantage that it had. Comics uh, knew how to really work this cycle, and and like the tech, you know, like the this is just kind of one way to do it. What the the viewer wrote into with in the email, but this idea that you could take comics and you could take replacements, you take every interaction as a way to say, hey, why don't you try this and this? You know, they, sometimes they call us the lost leader of a business. You give people things at your cost in the hopes of hooking them to get that longer business. Absolutely, in comics, it's there. And if you're running a shop, or hell for that matter, if you're Marvel or DC, um, and you know there's issues with Penguin Random House and Diamond and some of these things come up, when you have to go through the logistics of sending a replacement or interacting with a shop, you know, give them extra things. I, I've seen, it's funny, every time a publisher would send either free issues or sample issues or whatever to the shop, every time they did that, that particular title sales spiked up in my store. I just, I, I don't, whether it was intentional or not, I started pushing it more. I started promoting it. I was getting it in front of people. It was, it felt like I got something uh, to push and I'm going to push harder now for this thing. I'm going to reward the company, the publisher that's, that's doing this. And I think there's a million opportunities, but in fairness, like you said, you know, a customer who feels like they always get more than they expect with every interaction and the idea that every interaction that you make can be a lifetime interaction. It can be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to this customer now, but, you know, in, in, if I play my cards right, this will be my customer for five years. And so this, you know, $4 sale today for a comic can equate to you know, hundreds of dollars over the year of just collecting this one issue and the tie-ins and other things invariably follow. That's the power of comics. And so you, you have to, you know, when, when you do have a mistake, turn it into an advantage to you. If you have to do a replacement, you're shipping something anyway, put some extra stuff in there. It makes sense. And I, I know comic shops that do stuff like this and think about their business this way are successful. Same thing with publishers. They are successful when they can turn it and burn it and, and get more things going. But it starts with looking at your comic, not as a single sale, but as a, a long-term sale. And it's one of the reasons why I guess I'm so critical over all the uh, limited series and the five issue stuff and all the rest. It sends a message of finite. It doesn't encourage the customer behavior that these companies want. And, and I, I, I'll fight to the end on that with publishers. They, they're like, no, they, people don't really think that way. They do. The customer base does. And you've lost track of that. If you think that rolling out you know, four issue, five issue series like this is, uh, is, is productive. It is not. It's teaching the customer base not to think long-term. And when they don't think long-term, your business hurts. Anyway, thank you very much for the mail. Curious to see what, uh, to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.